welcome to part 25 of my building Black Pearl All Scenario version. I don't know if you can tell from a distance, but I've done some of the intricate work here on the back of the ship. I'll show how I did that. I'm working on the mast still. I've had a little setback or two, so I'll explain those setbacks. So let me give you a tour of the ship and get into detail on what's happened. new frustration point for me. Uh, I think on the last video I was so proud of myself as far as getting all these pulleys ready, these single pulleys. Each one of these needed to have a little hook down here or a ring so that I could tie uh, different things to it. So I'm disappointed with myself. I'm going to have to figure out a way to do that. I'll work on that. I'm using the uh, double-sided tape technique for something else. These are the metal pieces that go at different places on the exterior of the ship, kind of ornate uh, pieces that I've decided to go ahead and do in the 24 karat gold leaf. I've taken this metal leaf adhesive and put it in the center. This is just a regular, this isn't sticky here. I just used that as my palette. Then I went and painted all these pieces with this adhesive. The instructions on this bottle say you let it dry, dry 30 to 60 minutes. And then I'll be able to attach the gold leaf. So we'll see how that goes. It's been about 30 minutes. Here's my first gold leaf sheet. I've got two brushes available. This one's fairly soft. This one's a little stiffer. So if I need to push things down into the crevice, I can. I'm hoping to lift this over there. Uh, I'm not too successful there. I don't know if I can open this back up. No, so we're just going to go for it. The second sheet I'll do a little different. I think I'm going to try and leave it on. I want the paper, maybe tear the paper off. And now lay it. That was a little more successful. There you have it. And actually they're all looking pretty good. So I don't know how much actual uh, more dusting I'll really need to do. So I'll let those dry and then we'll get them on the ship. Here are the gold items put in place. The uh, winged looking ones go under and in between the statues. And the crab looking ones go across the back. One part to be uh, cautious of, this part here, there are two of these. And then if you swing around, these here at the back on the in inside part of the ship are slightly different than these ones on the outside. So just note to self, I just got lucky and happened to put this one on properly and that's when I noticed the subtle difference between the two.
I'm happy with the uh, the looks and the elegance that it adds to the ship. Here's the finished uh, mass work, and these are the yards for the fore mast, main mast, mizzen mast. And I finished burnishing them, and you can see the the darker tones that are already built in, the little burn marks. And now I'm going to stain them, and I'm using Minwax uh, semi-transparent red mahogany number 225 and I know it says red mahogany and I was hoping it would have a like a burgundy flavor to it but for some reason it it still comes out kind of a brownish tone so don't worry about the word red because it, it doesn't have much red to it once the stain is on this type of wood I'll also mention that uh, I didn't use all of the the dowels that came with the kit. I had a lot of uh, oak dowels already that were close enough in size and I like the oak so I uh, substituted those. I did use some of the dowels that came in the kit if I didn't have a similar size and in I think one case or two some of the medium smallish ones I used poplar which is something that I also had a dowel rod in. I will let this soak in for several minutes and then I'll come back out and wipe it all off. So I'll be back in a few minutes. That was a little longer than I intended but uh, it's about 15 minutes so it may have soaked in pretty good so not much is going to rub off. I'd mentioned earlier that I thought when I burnished the wood it seems to absorb the stain more and you can see these are turning out quite dark. Those turned out pretty good and what I'll do next after these dry probably for 24 hours I uh, I use tongue oil finish and the reason I do that it actually absorbs into the wood and strengthens it as opposed to doing some sort of a uh, varnish or polyurethane. I've been struggling with this area for several days now. This was confusing me where it says R10 plus R10. What I've concluded is there are two R10s and you put them both here stacked on top of each other. The only place I've found this duplication is when you get up higher on the masts. It's here and then way up the very top one it repeats itself R13 and R13 and it does that on each of the masts towards the top so be aware of that. Here's the area I'm talking about and I do have two of them stacked there. Now the lower part, this section is nice and thick, but those others were kind of thin. And, and putting together these supports, I uh, found it difficult to make them perfectly square. So I have this little miniature square, and that does help. So you might want to consider investing in something like that or using a square of some sort to help get all those pieces aligned as, as good as you can. There's a lot of fine detail work as you're building the ship, and here's an example for these supports. And notice the dowels that come up through that are both shown as round. Then some of them, as an example, the one dowel is round, the other is squared off. So that took me some time to work on. I wasn't 100% successful. As an example, here's one where the front one is rounded and this back one is squared off. This one has an example. There's one of those little square blocks there that's kind of a separator. And then you can see I double block this. There's a gap there that shouldn't be there. Might be able to take something. Push these together. There we go. Just need a little fine tuning. There are these two openings in the uh, bow of the ship, and they're doors, but all it 
had in the instructions was that the doors would just set in here. They would just go in like that, but I put on this little wooden hinge here or block of wood so I can spin that and it's like to hold it shut and then you can just spin it. I probably should put a little handle on a little rope because I have this fear that they will fall inside. If they do, they will be gone forever. So that will pivot. And uh, those blocks of wood will darken when I put some of the tongue oil on them. I think it would be a good idea to put another one of these little round hooks on that door so I could grab it and pull it out. I'll decide that later. Bringing your attention to the rear of the ship with the rudder, this was quite a bit of work and all those little round uh, heads are actually nails. I had to trim them off so they wouldn't go all the way through. So if I had this do over again, I think I would have done it a lot earlier in the build because with it on the ship it was pretty difficult to do and with all the equipment on the ship, I, I just think I should have done it earlier. It looks fine. I'm happy with how it turned out. I just think it was more work than it needed to be. The, um, the pivot point or the thing that is uh, holding the, the rudder to the ship is a very old piece of copper wire that I was given by my brother-in-law who happens to be an electrician and that worked out really well. I could have used a small dowel rod instead but I like the nostalgia of the very very old piece of copper. I had just begun putting on some of the vertical parts of the rat lines and making sure I can keep them in order and alternating one side to the other. I was going to explain that when I started looking at the plans in depth, I discovered something that I think is going to stop me in my tracks. I started looking on plan one, and you can see the rat lines are in place. There are some instructions on rat lines. But then I was thinking, aren't they going to be in the way when I try and tie off some of the lines on the inside of the ship? So that's when I looked at all the plans and realized if you look in reverse order, starting with plan number four, you'll notice that there are no rat lines in place. And these lines are kind of in the center of the ship, working their way from the forward part of the ship to the rear. So then I looked at plan number three. That's when I noticed that in addition to some more lines being put in place, there are just a couple of rat lines, or I don't think they're really rat lines, but they go to the same dead eyes uh, on the ship. And the upper rat lines are tied and in place. And it would make sense to me that you would start at the top and work your way down just as you start in the middle of the ship and work your way out. So that brings me to plan two. It shows more information on the lower part of the ship, but the upper part of the ship is, is uh, not shown. It's kind of a cutaway with just the lower part of the ship, similar to plan one. So let me bring that photo back up and you'll see it's uh, similar. And now it kind of makes sense, plan one is where you're doing mostly rat lines and the other lines would already be in place. So instead of working from blueprint or plan number one, two, three, four, I think it's designed to be a start in four and you work your way to the finish like a count off for a launch. Four, three, two, one. That's what I'm going with. I hope that makes sense to everyone and I'll keep working. Here's a little insight if you're a relatively new builder like myself. I had mentioned several times that I was trying to pre-assemble some things, especially if I had to drill a hole somewhere and put an eyelet or something. Well, here's one that I missed, and it's not really anywhere in the instructions that I ever saw, but you're going to suspend the, 
the yard arms off the masts and you can see there's a rope here and then there's a pulley but what you suspend it off of it kind of shows it here so I look here and there's an eyelet that goes right there I already have my masts kind of in place and I'm not going to pull them all out. I guess I could because they're not secured, but that just doesn't seem strong enough to me to hold in there. I mean, I can put the eye bolt in, put a little super glue on it, but that, that little cross member there is not that strong, especially when you get up to the upper masts. So I've been drilling into the this section of a mast and putting it on there. So hopefully that helps. So you can see right up there is one of them. And this one's easier to see right here. I will use that to spin to hold the, the yards up. As you get up in the mast, these little pieces of wood here are very thin and very fragile, especially way up here at the top. So, note to self, for future builds, maybe decide where to put those way before you put the masks in place. That's it for part 25, and um, I'm a little frustrated, but I'm making progress. I wasn't observant as much as I would like to have been. I've determined that when you're building this type of a ship, it kind of assumes that you have some basic knowledge especially on like the pulleys and things like that, that I don't have. I knew that the pulleys needed to have a loop on the end from a prior build, but when I started putting them together, I had forgotten. So part of it's my fault, and part of it is uh, continuing education when it comes to building ships. This is Boiler Dan 1, where my motto is, I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing, and obviously I needed to do a little more research on this build, but I'm still learning. As always, thanks for watching.